Last time on Out Chasing Stars, we completed our second leg down the coast of Madagascar. We stopped in at the gorgeous Maramba Bay to see some baobab trees and made one last diesel run in Mahajanga. Our final stop was in Bali Bay, where we expected to wait a while for a good weather window, but the universe had different plans. It is time to cross the Mozambique Channel. And yeah, it deserves a little bit of extra emphasis because this is a big one. Uh, that, you know, there's kind of been three passages in the Indian Ocean that I've been a little bit nervous about, getting from Seychelles down to Madagascar, getting from Madagascar over to South Africa, and then getting around South Africa is the third one. So we are getting ready to cross number two off that list. This is just kind of a crazy passage. There's lots of crazy currents that kind of wrap around in the, the channel out there. The winds, um, they, they do some interesting things. Uh, very dominated by the weather systems coming off of South Africa to the south, so we have to try to find our window just right. And I, th I think we found as good a one as we're going to get. It'll be a little challenging getting out of Madagascar. It's still dealing with this land sea breeze effect, so uh, it's helping at the moment, and that is coming off our starboard aft quarter. But throughout the day, it's going to be shifting all the way around to from the nose. So we got to get through that. And then once we get into the channel, should be some light winds for a little bit. Hopefully enough that we can kind of make a straight beeline over towards Africa. Then when we're over there, then the winds will feel a little bit from the east-southeast. We can make our turn a little bit more to the south, get a little bit better angle. My goal is to try and get kind of past the, the point, the tip of Madagascar here, um, before the wind starts really shifting around. And that way when it does come in front of us, we can keep pointing off a little bit further to the south. And that's the plan. Let's see how well it works out. Favorite, isn't it? It's a good one tonight. Yeah, maybe a green flash. Maybe a green flash. It's so red. The horizon was incredibly clear, and it looked like the sun was just melting into the ocean. But we weren't lucky enough to see a green flash. The sail plan I'd cooked up, though, put us in a pretty good position for the start of our second day. We had an absolutely gorgeous sunrise to start out our second day at sea out here. And uh, beautiful colors in the sky, the sun just peeking through the clouds. It is a glorious way to start the day. Plus, it is a little cap on the my first day plans. Actually went according to plan, who would have thought? Uh, mostly because the winds really decided to help out. They didn't clock around nearly in front of us as fast as I thought they were going to. Um, so they stayed off on our starboard side. We sailed fast enough to get around that point of Madagascar. When they did finally shift around, we were able to kind of shift with them. Uh, and they died out, we motored for a little while, and they filled in again from the south. We started sailing again. Yeah, it actually worked. And now we're far enough out in the middle of the channel that we're catching some of the really advantageous currents. Um, my plan is 
uh, I downloaded the currents actually for the Mozambique channel so I can kind of see which way they're spinning and going whatnot. And we're going to try our best to stay in the currents that are helping us along the way. Especially because if you get in the wrong currents where the wind is against the waves, um, or the wind is against the current, excuse me, that's when the waves really pop up. So we want to make sure we're trying to avoid that. Um, and you know, so far so good. Now, the wind is still doing the whole clocking around thing out here in this part of the channel. I think not until we get close to Africa will they finally settle down and kind of come from a consistent direction all day long. But um, we are still sailing at the moment. Screecher is working quite well. And uh, yeah, enjoying that boost from the current for sure. The wind has definitely died out this afternoon but I'm not actually that upset about it. Uh, it is allowing us to turn a little bit further to the south and make some southing, which is important because tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I think are gonna be our toughest days out here because when the wind fills in, it's going to be coming from kind of the south, southeast. So in order for us to be able to hopefully not be bashing into that wind, making the south now and being able to turn a little bit more to the, uh, straight to the west, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense, uh, would be better. And uh, if you do that in light winds without bashing, that's okay. My plan for tackling the Mozambique Channel involved doing whatever it took to put ourselves where we wanted to be to deal with the weather we knew was going to come at us. And if that required some motoring, that's why we got more diesel in Mahajanga. We got a second good sunset in a row. Yeah, it's so red. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And it's so dark behind the sun. It's crazy watching the sunset here because it just like, it melts at first and then it just shrinks and shrinks and it's like a little bubble going down. And then, poof, disappears. Gone. Another day in the books. One day closer to South Africa. Yeah. When I was first looking at the grid files for this passage, I would kind of earmarked Tuesday, which is today, and Wednesday as potentially the two roughest days of the trip. And that was because uh, those would be the days where the wind would be coming out of the south and we would be crossing over some patches of water where the current would be coming out of the north and that puts kind of the current against the wind and that can uh, pick up some seas pretty darn quickly. They are not huge right now uh, because this is the situation exactly what we find ourselves in. Uh, the waves are not huge but they've got a very short period and that makes it very bouncy, not particularly comfortable. It may have been bouncy, but the winds were still fairly light, which is why I was okay departing Madagascar when we did. Having northerly winds with current from the north would have been ideal, but ideal doesn't seem to happen often in the Mozambique Channel. Why so glum, chum? We lost a prop. Are you freaking kidding me? I am not freaking kidding you. I, uh, the wind died, so I went to start up the engine, the starboard engine, and got nothing. Zip so. zero zilch nada, huh? Yeah, unfortunately this is the third time we've lost a prop. Um, the first time we were able to retrieve it, way back in the Virgin Islands. But um, I think the last time we took our prop off was in Australia, so it's been on for a long time. And Installed exactly to specifications, manual says no maintenance required, and they keep flipping, falling off. Yeah. Um, we debated getting in the water and uh, replacing it with our fixed prop, which is from the factory, but... Um, Instead, we're just gonna check in and make sure that the rope cutters aren't gonna come loose and we're gonna try to make it to Basarudo or Richards Bay on one engine. But the good news is we have friends in Richards Bay 
and we can get some assistance docking since we're going to the marina. So hopefully that should be okay. We just have to keep chugging along here. Yay, so happy. Yeah. The prop is definitely gone. We can see that on the GoPro footage. I don't really want to be adding the fixed prop at this point because it A, slows us down a crazy amount and B, it's just not really what I'm going to do in the middle of the ocean. So um, I think I'm just going to check the rope cutter real quick and then come back on the boat. Blue. Yep. <laughs> that rope cutter is pretty firmly on there, so I don't think I'm pulling it off unless I'm getting a hammer, which I don't really want to do. So, back on the boat. Okay. I've been sitting up here for a while trying to figure out exactly what I want to say about this situation. And look, I get it. It's not a critical emergency. Starry Horizons is not in any danger of sinking. Uh, Amy and I are fine, but man, just so freaking frustrating is the, it's about the nicest word that's coming to mind at the moment. Um, you know, as Amy mentioned, this is the third time that this has happened. And the first two, I was willing to chalk up to user error. Like, you know, maybe I had installed the prop wrong, something like that, but this last time, I installed it exactly as per specifications, like using the exact right parts, both straight from the manufacturer, um, you know, everything tightened exactly as it's supposed to have been, and still gone. So frustrating is the best I'm gonna do right now for this video. In other news, we are sailing again, so that's good. We won't have to tax our port engine, uh, and thank goodness we have two, I guess, for being a catamaran. But uh, with the winds back up, we are sailing. We are sailing uh, pretty tight upwind at the moment because the winds have shifted around more southerly, plus we are in a northbound current at the moment. Um, so it's all kind of conspiring to push us a bit. Fortunately, the wind is with the waves this time, so it's not super crazy bumpy. Um, and the wind is supposed to shift a little bit throughout the night kind of behind us again, so we might be able to sail a little bit easier and point more at the waypoint where we're going. So yeah, we'll... Uh, We'll get there eventually, but frustrating, just frustrating. For the third night in a row, we had an absolutely clear horizon for sunset. It's pretty rare to have no clouds at all blocking the sun. That was a good distraction, but when it didn't take my mind off our vanishing prop completely, I had to resort to drastic measures. What is going on here? Well, I figured I would give the Admiral a little break in the galley, and I'm going to try cooking something tonight. Uh, you know, it's got to be special, so uh, my sister, our, you know, short side morale officer, sent me a recipe for the world's best chicken. I have to test and actually see if this is true, but um, it's promising. A little bit of Dijon mustard, maple syrup, red wine vinegar. It smells pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Da, 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 time for the big reveal and hope I didn't like, you know, burn things. Whoa. Not too bad, I think. A little bouncy, but that looks tasty. Looks like chicken's supposed to look. <laughs> Good job, sweetie. Just well. in time for a nice little romantic sunset dinner, huh? I like romantic sunsets out in the middle of the ocean. Only with me though, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> Just you. And everyone watching. <laughs> a little hot there? Well, I have a reputation for burning myself, so... <laughs> True story. Which David teases me for all the time. I do, but you know, I don't exactly like when it happens. <laughs> and I want you to be able to enjoy the world's best chicken. Is it, is it truly the world's best chicken? I don't know about the world's best. I mean, I haven't eaten all the chickens, but pretty good. Well, good. I'm glad it's uh, suitable for tonight's dinner. 
It's very good. Now come have your date night with me, sweetie. Okie dokie. I was quite relieved when we both woke up without food poisoning. After my morning download of weather files, I saw something that was hopeful and concerning all at the same time. The time has come for us to make some challenging decisions. Uh, most of the boats that do this passage go from Madagascar over to an island in Mozambique called Bazaruto. It's kind of a nice little like halfway point. People can stop, wait for another weather system to pass, get a favorable weather to make the last little jump down to South Africa and Richards Bay. We got a later start than most of the boats that left Madagascar, and it looks like maybe we'll be able to make the jump straight all the way down. Um, there is a little bit of a challenging weather thing that we're having to work through, so I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what I'm seeing. I've got predict wind open for this passage, and I'm going to show you kind of one model. Most of them are showing the same thing. So right now, we're actually up right around where the cursor is. And uh, as I look through, today is Thursday. Wind's gonna die Friday. Look down at the bottom of the screen. That's a lot of southerly winds coming. Now it does kind of die out um, right around here. And that's the challenging choice we have to make. Rather than going to Bazaruto, we are going to kind of keep making our way south and stay offshore. The idea being that uh, we're going to kind of manage our speed so that we are north of where that system kind of dies out. And then once the winds kind of clock around to the southeast, we will be far enough offshore that we have a decent sailing angle to start angling in towards South Africa. It'll just be maybe a day, day and a half that might be a little sucky. But if we don't go now and we go into Bazaruto, then there's another southerly system that's kind of forming around Richards Bay next Wednesday. And that would be, you know, like if we waited a night or two to wait for this southerly system to leave, then we'd be running into that one down in South Africa. So we might be waiting a while and uh, we kind of want to get to South Africa. You know, we have props to figure out like what the heck we're going to do about that. So yeah, I think, I think we're going to go for it. Making the decision to go for it was a bit nerve-wracking, but I knew I didn't want to face a storm like the one that was forecasted with only one engine working properly. After checking the weather today, um, I'm a little concerned with the southeasterlies that are planned as we're kind of making our way around that corner. And we might need that starboard engine to kind of help keeping us going into the wind, uh, which kind of necessitates a prop on that engine and we're going to take advantage of right now is very very light winds this is about as calm as we've got so we're in a bit of a hope too i'm going to jump back in the water get the prop back on or our, our fixed prop spare on and then we'll get back going again all inflated try to give this a try okay this works like i'm planning it <laughs> don't get can't, don't get tangled up in the line yeah we're gonna wait carefully You're back safely on board. Yeah, that was um, not a whole lot of fun. It was kind of exhilarating though. Like, boat is bouncing around a little bit. You look straight down and it's just, God, is it so blue. But the water is incredibly clear. It's, it's pretty fascinating actually, but oh, props on. Feel good about that. Yeah. No sharks, right? No sharks today. No, <laughs> yeah, I don't think we mentioned it, but last time when I was contemplating doing this, we looked out and I saw a fin in the water and I didn't see a blow spout, so I don't think it was a whale, it wasn't a dolphin. It was big. Nature was telling me not time to go in the water, so we listened. Props on now. Alrighty. I think we're good to go. Richard's Bay, here we come. Yeah, hopefully. I'm feeling better now that we've got the, the fixed prop on the starboard side. It wasn't fun being in the water getting that done, but I feel better prepared for um, kind of getting through the remnants of this southerly system that we're approaching. Um, you know, feel like we've got a good plan, doing as best we can, but having both engines available is good. Now, I have been emailing with Flexifold trying to figure out why the prop may have fallen off. And they have told me, and I want to make sure that I get this correct, that 
the prop only falls off in instances of incorrect installation, meaning that you don't follow the instructions properly. I am 100% sure that I followed their instructions exactly. So also the fact that the prop was put on two years ago, there's no recommended maintenance from them other than to just keep it clean, which I do. So I'm not 100% sure I buy it and um, very, very frustrating. I keep using that word, but we'll, we'll think and maybe reevaluate some options when we are in South Africa. Putting the prop on was a good first step, but there were a few other things I wanted to do as well in order to prepare for a Mozambique Channel storm. Today is going to be the tricky day of this passage. It is Friday, so this is when the winds are supposed to kind of clock around to the southeast. Um, you know, the remnants of the southerly system that's coming up, it's dying out kind of in front of us uh, in, a, in a few hours, so that's when the winds will be switching around to the southeast. Right now, things are very calm, very light, but we're taking advantage of the time to prepare Starry Horizons because, you know, other boats have told us the Mozambique Channel has a reputation for storms being a little worse than forecasted. And so even though this system is forecasted to maybe have like 20 knots of true wind speed, I just, you know, I'm, I'm worried. So we are preparing for heavy weather. I've gone ahead and run the third reef all the way through again, and that is rigged up on the mainsail. Uh, you know, had to run that through the low friction ring, back down to the boom, so that is done, that is ready. Uh, we decided to drop this creature completely, put it in a bag and just stowed that away in the, in the bow locker. And that way, you know, if the winds do pick up, then that thing won't have a chance of coming unraveled because that's a crisis I won't have to deal with. Try to put things away inside, basically get Star Horizons as ready for bad weather as we can, under the theory that, uh, you know, kind of it's my umbrella theory. If you prepare for rain and bring an umbrella, then you won't need it. I'm really hoping we're over preparing for this, but just in case, I would much rather be ready than not. The wind has increased enough that we can actually sail even faster than we would be able to motor sail. So sails are up. Wind is definitely starting to shift around to the southeast, but uh, right now we're only got true wind speeds of around like 12, 13 knots. Um, and it's not quite as far southeast as it's supposed to be a little bit later today. So we're gonna keep advantage of sails and sailing and going fast and all that stuff. Uh, I am I am still playing this cautious card, and I know I'm probably sounding overly cautious here, but don't care, just Mozambique Channel kind of gives me a little bit on edge. Uh, we have a reef in the main, and um, though it's definitely not needed right now, um, you know, we've got the remnants of a front that was coming up at us. Don't know if all of a sudden just boom, you know, the winds might shoot up real fast. Don't want to be messing with any of that stuff, so we're just ready, as best we can be. This was a tricky situation from a timing perspective. I didn't want to be too far south when the remnants of that front died out, but I had to balance that with getting far enough south to be able to make a big course correction before the winds filled in from the southeast again. How you feeling, babe? Ready for tonight? Yeah, I think we're braced for impact. Just <laughs> braced kidding, for impact. not impact. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that sounds daunting. Thanks. <laughs> uh, no, we, you know, put things away and um, got the screecher down and just kind of, yeah. Ready we're, for the worst case, as I was saying, yeah? Yeah, and you know, this passage has been really good so far, so knock on wood, like, it's alright. We're gonna be okay. We'll survive a, a little bit of a rough spot, but on the whole, well, things are going okay. Yeah, we've only got like, uh, 56 hours left or something in this passage, so... I don't know. Today's Friday. We arrive hopefully on Monday. Yeah. I don't know how many hours that is, but somewhere around there. I did the math, baby. You did the math? Yeah. Well, what an engineer you are. Um, yeah, so I think we're gonna be alright. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, deep breath, everyone ready? Let's do it. And this is why you prepare for the worst in the Mozambique Channel. Holy crap. Uh, the weather forecast was supposed to have the winds no deeper than about 145. All four predict wind models agreed with that. 
We've seen a uh, true wind direction down in the 160s, 170s, even touching 180 a couple times. Uh, wind forecast is for 22 knots true, gusting up into the mid 20s. That's been about accurate. Um, we've actually seen apparent wind speeds touching up over 30, which means for the very first time, I think ever, we actually have three reefs in the main right now. This is, um, it's bumpy. We'll, we'll just put it that way. Uh, but we're still sailing, we're still going pretty much the direction I want to. We're sailing a little bit tighter than I wanted, but we're still sailing. So that's good. The Star Horizon's holding up well. Got a couple uh, birds hanging out, trying to seek shelter from the storm. Do not blame them. But yeah, keep on going on. Now that it's light outside and I can see the waves, these things are pretty big. The weather forecast was telling me that it's about 2.7 meters what they're forecasting for the waves. I think that's probably accurate with some of these probably topping over three meters as they're rolling through. We are definitely like rolling quite a lot with the horizon, getting bounced around, lots of blue water bashing up um, into the hulls and flying up here to the, the helm and stuff. So it's it's a bumpy ride for sure, um, but you know, we always say the boat can take more than the humans can, and right now Starry Horizons is working like a champ. We're deeply, deeply reefed, um, kind of one reef more than is recommended in our uh, reefing schedule. Just an abundance of caution because the waves are kind of short and steep, so I don't want to potentially risk a situation where we get pushed over, so yeah. Doing okay, winds are gonna stay like this for a little while today and then start dying out and moving around this afternoon. So we've got a little while of this still to go. As you can imagine, when the ride gets that rough, neither of us sleep particularly well. When I woke up from my morning nap, Amy was quite excited that it was her turn. Ready to take over my watch for me? It's my nap time. Didn't sleep super well last night, so I'm pretty tired. All right, we've got three reefs in the main and two reefs in the Genoa. The autopilot is set for wind vane at about 59 degrees. <clears throat> um, if the wind gets around 30 knots of apparent wind speed, it's time to reef the Genoa again. Um, but hopefully we can just keep cruising like this and keep up our speed and yeah. All right, you good? I'm gonna go down. Good night. I think we are pretty much through the worst of this southerly system. The winds are dropping down um, into the high teens, even down into the mid teens for a little while. We've been able to pull all but one reef out of the main and the Genoa, so um, I'm not worried about winds gusting back up to like 30 plus, which is a nice calming feeling. It's been, um, been a rough 20-ish hours or so, but I'm, I'm very pleased with how my, how my plan for today ended up. So I think it was well worth it yesterday to kind of be motoring as far south as we could. The angle I chose worked uh, pretty well, I think. Um, given that the wind today clocked around a bit more southerly than was forecasted, so we had some leeway built in, a little bit of safety, room for error, which has worked out well. So the winds are supposed to be kind of clocking around behind us, coming from the northeast for the rest of the passage, which should be hopefully a nice run on in towards Richards Bay. 
looks like there could be some high winds from outside Richards Bay, but it uh, should be from behind us. So fingers crossed. Planning on this trip has gone pretty well so far. Hoping I can keep that up. It really is kind of amazing to me just how fast the weather can change out here. And yesterday we were in a huge storm bashing into waves. Overnight, wind's dead. Less than uh, 10 knots of true wind speed and it's clocking around so it's coming from behind us. So we're going slow, which is an okay thing because we're kind of into a speed management game now. So you know, we don't like to arrive places during nighttime hours. So in order to arrive during Richards Bay or into Richards Bay during sunlight, we have to do about 6.5 knots or less. Um, so we're okay going slow for right now. The winds later today though, are gonna change again. So they're continuing moving behind us and they're gonna be picking up. So by the time we get into Richards Bay, could have 20 plus knots again. Behind us though is a whole different story. Hopefully be a little more comfortable. But yeah, speed management time. You're looking quite a bit more comfortable up here today, babe. It's not too shabby right now. Yeah, it's not having to bash into waves and wind. Yeah, and the temperature is really nice. It's a cloudy day, um, so yeah. It's good, and we're, where are we? Heading towards final approach? Yeah, we are, what, maybe 60, 70 miles to Richards Bay? Um, yeah. And, oh, 87 miles, sorry. 87 miles to Richards Bay. And we have to get between like three and a half and seven knots to get in in daylight tomorrow. So we took the main down and we're just sailing with the Genoa and right we're now. We're on easy street, yeah, maybe. we're on easy street. The waves have really calmed down because the wind is was calm for most of the today. And with the Genoa, we're still going like five and a half, six knots. So, just cranking along. Before you know it, we'll be in Richards Bay, South Africa. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Our stay on Easy Street wouldn't last too long. The Mozambique Channel and South Africa had prepared a nice present for us for our arrival. It's turned out to be a little wilder night than I was expecting. The weather forecast we had was for upper teens, low 20s, maybe a gust up to 30. Yeah, we had a true wind speed touching up over 40 a couple times. That's kind of crazy. The Mozambique channel on here is, is just no joke. Like, just kind of have to be ready for anything, I guess. But I was very glad that we made the decision to take it very easy on this last night. We had the main completely down. It was just a Genoa, so that makes it very easy to reef and, you know, sail conservatively. Um, which we're doing fine. We're still on pace to arrive into Richards Bay during the sunlight, which is always our preference. But yeah, 40 knots. Kind of wild. It is last sunrise at sea time. Let's go out and take a look at it. I don't think it's gonna go down as one of our better ones ever. It's, it's sprinkling a little bit still. Uh, the waves are still pretty massive after the storm last night. At least it's not thundering and lightning anymore. We're about uh, three, four miles away from the entrance into Richards Bay. So yeah, almost there. Maybe about our most glorious entry to a new country ever, huh? Yeah, it is uh, pretty gray and rainy and not, not super pleasant right uh, now. We were like less than a mile from shore and you can barely see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and we're like close to surfing the waves in, so it's not uh, super calm out here, but hopefully once we get inside the breakwater, it'll be a lot better. Yeah, keep our fingers crossed. But hey, we're like less than a mile from South Africa. <laughs> Almost there! Almost there! Crossing the Mozambique Channel was as difficult as advertised, but we were super proud of ourselves for getting it done and super excited to explore one of our favorite countries. Hey, 
y'all. Thank you for checking out the rather long video of crossing the Mozambique Channel. I did try to cut this down, but there was just so much that happened that I wanted to share with you guys. So hope you enjoyed it anyways. You can tell behind me that's not Starry Horizons, it's not the water. Right now we are grilling some ribs, not grilling, smoking some ribs. We've seen armadillas. We are back in Texas for sure, enjoying spending time with family. Uh, we've got lots more videos coming up from our time in South Africa, lots of wildlife, lots of exploring. Stick around, check those out. We'll see y'all next time.